It's the true story of a teenage girl kidnapped by an adult. He scares her and rape her many times and she can't resist because gun in his hand is a huge threat. This movie opens up with Cara Robinson waking to birdsong. Jess, her friend, wakes up shortly after. Kara later calls Deborah Johnson, her mother, to announce tonight's lake house party. She also reminds Deborah that she'll visit her dad earlier than usual this weekend, which Deborah resists. Besides, Jess tells Kara to water the plants while she gets ready, unaware of a black muscle car passing by. Unfortunately, Richard approaches Kara in the same car. He distracts Kara by pretending to sell magazines before pulling a gun and terrifying her. He orders her to remain silent and enter a large storage bin in his car's back seat. Kara fights a panic attack while driving away. Meanwhile, Jess prepares to leave but can't find Kara. She calls for her friend after finding the garden hose discarded. On the other hand, the car stops in a deserted area and Richard tells Kara he'll gag and restrain her, emphasizing his armed status. Kara agrees and he gets the restraints. Kara's heart races as she searches for escape. She wants to flee but fears being shot, so she waits. Richard returns and binds her before closing the container. Just then, Jess calls Deborah's office to request an unannounced Kara pickup. Deborah denies this and worries about her daughter's disappearance. She calls Kara's boyfriend Ryan to check if they're together. He says she should be with Jess, but Deborah says she's not. Before visiting Jess, the mother calls the police. After stopping his car, the abductor brings the container inside a house. Kara is warned to stay quiet as he removes her restraints. Kara is taken to a bedroom where the man says he's always armed. Richard tells her to follow his orders and ask for permission. Breaking the rules will have dire consequences, he warns. Abductor asks about her life and writes answers in a notebook. After assuming her innocence, he orders her to lie on the bed and stay quiet. Kara can only remember to wait, follow the rules, and survive. Later, Deborah calls her ex-husband Ron to confirm Kara isn't with him. Ron rushes over after Deborah tearfully tells him their daughter may have been abducted. Jess's house is visited by a police officer, so Deborah reports Kara missing for two hours. However, the officer believes Kara fled. She strongly denies this, blaming her daughter. Before leaving, the officer tells her to wait for Kara. Also, Kara gathers information at Richard's house while waiting to escape. She chats with Richard and discovers he was in the Navy. She is comforted and promised release by the abductor. He comforts her before leaving. Later, Richard shows Kara his pets, saying he likes them because they're simple and don't mind cages. He apologizes and promises to release Kara, but warns that reporting will ruin her reputation. Deborah is upset at home. Jess's neighbor saw a suspicious black muscle car before Kara disappeared, confirming her suspicions. She's forming a search party and contacting everyone. Apart from this, Kara asks to use the bathroom at Richard's house, hoping to escape. However, Richard appears with his gun and watches her close the door. If she washes her hands without permission, he reminds her. The man leers at Kara as she asks permission. Richard makes dinner. Kara doesn't want to eat, but her abductor reminds her of the rules, so she does. Since she offers, Richard asks her to sweep the kitchen floor. Kara memorizes the names and numbers of calling cards on the fridge, knives, and his calendar as she does so. Richard suddenly orders her to undress while watching his obedient guest. In the police station, Sheriff Dale Stevens doesn't take her disappearance seriously. He promises Deborah that his best people will handle the case before politely dismissing her and telling her to go home in case Kara calls. Richard watches the news and gaslights Kara into thinking nobody cares about her disappearance. She's taken to the bedroom and told to climb in the storage bin because he'll call someone. He gags and closes the lid, making her hyperventilate. He gets angry at the noise but shows compassion by removing the gag and not closing the container. Kara cries silently, vowing to survive. After covering the cages, Richard whispers goodnight to his pets. After taking a large box under the cages, he sees and hears her watching him. He hides it in an instant. 
She considers closing the door and escaping through the window when her captor leaves while brushing his teeth, but she'll get caught. Richard chains Kara to the bed and whispers he's excited for tomorrow before bed. Kara hears Richard snoring in the morning and decides this is her best chance. After unchaining herself, she tiptoes out of the room to escape. She runs out the front door and flags down a two-man car. Hurley says she was abducted when she requested police station transport. She asks them to remember an apartment unit as they let her in and drive off. Kara seeks justice at the police station after escaping. At the front desk, she reports her abduction. Lieutenant Aaron Rowland takes Kara to his office for a detailed statement and calls for another inspector to get the missing person's report. Interviewing her rescuers is also ordered. Sergeant Bonnie interviews Kara's rescuers, but they can't remember her apartment because it happened so quickly. As Bonnie presents Deborah's missing persons report, Kara recounts her escape. Aaron calls Deborah to say her daughter was found. He gives Kara the phone to have a tearful conversation. Kara's rescuers couldn't remember the apartment where she was held, so Bonnie asks her. Aaron urges Kara to try despite her reluctance. Her desire for justice gives her the courage to return to Richard's apartment. They arrive at the apartment complex to find identical units. The officers tell a maintenance man about Kara's attacker. Kara joins and adds details. While counting her abductor's pets, the maintenance man figures out the apartment number is 301. Bonnie is shown the unit while Aaron leads Kara to the car, recalling her sharp memory. Deborah and Kara tearfully reunite at the police station after Kara returns from the apartment complex. Bonnie opens Unit 301 with the maintenance man's key after getting no response and Aaron and Sheriff Jim Price search the unit but find no one. Bonnie brings pictures to Kara and her mom at the hospital. Richard is identified by Kara as the apartment 301 tenant. He's escaped, but Bonnie assures them he'll be caught. Kara recites all the information she has about Richard when Bonnie asks for help finding him. She also mentions the large box under the bird cages. Bonnie tells Kara she'll be examined at the crime scene for evidence. Aaron says they couldn't find Richard's black muscle car registration. Kara says the box contained newspaper clippings and a notebook with Richard's criminal history. Jim orders the officers to research the clippings cases while Aaron analyzes the notebook. Jim tells Dale that the news clippings were about Sophia Sylvia and the List sisters' abduction victims. Richard held his victims for days before drowning and dumping them in a swamp. The notebook listed targets and routines but not Kara. Jim thinks Richard had to take someone else because the target deviated from her routine on Kara's abduction day. Bonnie tells both sheriffs that Richard's wife, mother and sister will cooperate tomorrow and let them search her house. Kara and Jess, Ryan and Ron reunite emotionally after her exam. Jess is reassured that she wasn't responsible. Kara says she wants to go home after hearing whispers. Bonnie and Jim help search at Richard's mother's house. It's the black muscle car they think Richard drove before switching. Kara complains about the police presence at the Johnson home when Bonnie visits. Bonnie says it's for her safety and support since her abductor hasn't been arrested. Kara accepts this despite disliking it. She relaxes and hopes Richard is caught while she sleeps. Ronnie says it will happen soon. The next morning, Kara tells her mother she'll visit Ryan. Deborah refuses, insisting she stay until Richard is caught. Kara says her tragedy won't change her life. The two argue until Jess arrives. Kara ends their conversation and happily invites Jess to her room. Kara acts like nothing happened, leaving Jess unsure how to react. Kara advises her friend to ask whatever she wants, but Jess says she just wants to be safe. Kara comforts her and insists her friend ask what she wants. Kara recounts her ordeal when Jess asks hesitantly. In response to Aaron's questions at the station, Ashley, Richard's wife, says she was away over the weekend but denies the charges. She denies knowing where he is or having spoken to him. Richard's sister Stephanie arrives later. Ashley becomes more upset when she greets their mother, Maggie Ivanitz, and her sister-in-law in the lobby. 
Stephanie learns that Richard would drive Ashley's car with a swap license plate and contact them to reunite with his wife. Aaron sympathizes with her because she thinks Richard has abducted women before. Stephanie admits Richard called her yesterday afternoon and apologizes for not telling her sooner. Aaron rushes into Jim's office and gives him Richard's motel information, which Stephanie arranged. Bonnie is sent to the motel immediately because Jim thinks Richard is still there since it's not checkout time. Kara asks if they can watch Ryan's baseball game after dropping off Jess. Jess is surprised but agrees. Dale asks about Kara after Jess leaves. He calls her a victim and orders her to stay home until Richard is caught. Kara says the police should try harder to find Richard since they did nothing when she was abducted. The woman's behavior surprises and offends her. Dale reveals that Richard planned to kill her because he has likely killed three other women. Kara was surprised because she thought Richard would release her. The sheriff says Kara was lucky she wasn't next, but she says luck didn't help her escape. Jim believes Richard is too busy escaping to plot against Kara or another woman, but Aaron thinks a family member warned him. Aaron is informed by the sheriff that the apartment's evidence matches Sylvia's and the Liss sisters. Aaron is surprised that Kara may solve the cold cases. Jim introduces himself to Kara as Richland County Sheriff at the Johnson home. She thinks he wants her to stay home where it's safe, but he says Kara can defend herself, surprising her. He offers to answer questions, so Kara asks if Richard killed Sylvia and the Liss sisters. Jim says they're waiting for proof but Kara's box contents suggest it. Kara wonders if Richard would have killed her aunt. Jim says they'll never know because she didn't let him. Jim thanks Kara for her efforts, calling her a survivor rather than a victim. Kara is shocked. This perspective shift empowers Kara and changes her perspective. Aaron calls Jim on the way out of Kara's house to say Richard used his cell phone 15 minutes ago in Jacksonville, Florida, and they suspect he's going to his other sister in Bradenton. Jim advises Aaron to notify the police. Bonnie reports that the Avonix family has no more information, so they contact Richard's sister in Bradenton, Pamela, who says Richard called her to meet outside his favorite restaurant. Bonnie then informs Bradenton police that Richard may be at the Johnson home en route. Deborah pleaded with Kara to stay in Jessica's car. Kara ignores this, determined to forget her abduction. Deborah advises her to rest, but Kara refuses to let what happened take over her life. She apologizes to her mother and leaves with Jess. At the baseball game, Kara wishes Ryan luck before going to her seat. A Bradenton officer spots Richard, who flees as one officer chases him on foot, while his partner stays in the car and radios in their location before joining the chase by car. Richard is cornered by officers and desperately tries to escape. At the game, Ryan hits a home run and Richard shoots himself. Kara and the audience applaud Ryan's performance as the nightmare ends. The next morning, Kara feels uneasy but smiles anyway. Her mother makes pancakes, which she finds odd. Deborah informs her that Richard died last night and officers are arriving. Kara is furious that no one told her immediately, but Deborah says she didn't want to ruin their baseball game celebration. Kara still isolates herself. Kara is sitting outside when Jim arrives. He sits beside her and suspects a deeper cause for her anger. Kara vents her anger at Richard, saying her desire for justice kept her going after the abduction. She wishes she could have told Richard abducting her was disastrous. Kara suddenly realizes there's no more trial, so she can spare her loved ones the painful details of her abduction. Jim admires her persistence in protecting her family after all she's been through. He calls her a hero and believes Richard knew taking her would ruin him. Inside the house, Bonnie advises Deborah to let Kara process her feelings. As the officer leaves, Kara enters and demands her freedom, refusing to let what happened to her bind her. Deborah apologizes for her control and says she doesn't know what to do. Kara says her mother can't fix the tragedy, but she can help her heal by giving her space. They embrace, starting their recovery and resilience. If you like this movie then don't forget to subscribe to the channel.